like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. It's a blessing to have you with us. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me, if you would, to Exodus chapter 35. And uh, we have begun looking at this chapter as there is preparation for the building of the tabernacle here. And um, Moses is presenting the need to the children of Israel that they have for various things for building the tabernacle. And as we look at this, we see the theme of it all is the importance of making God first. And we've seen in verses 1 through 3 how they were to make God first in the Sabbath day. And then we took some time yesterday to look at how that as New Testament believers that God is giving us the first day of the week, Sunday, as the Lord's day to worship him and to gather together as a body of believers. Now, every day is the Lord's day, and every day we should be involved in worshiping him and we need to spend time in his presence. Today we want to look at making God first in the offering. So let's read Exodus chapter 35, beginning in verse 4, down through verse 9. It says, And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram's hair dyed red and badger skins and shigam wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onk stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. So as we look at this offering, first of all, we see that this is an offering that is commanded by God. Uh, he tells him in verse 4, Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying. So, this was not something that was simply the thought of Moses, that he thought, well, this would be a good way to do this. No, God commanded the children of Israel to give to the work of the Lord. And friends, that is a re wonderful reminder to us today as well, that God has instructed the people of God to give to the Lord's work. God's work is not to be uh, financed through carnal means, but it is to be financed through the giving of God's people. So it's an offering that is commanded by God, and it is an offering to the Lord. Uh, it's not an offering to the tabernacle or to the work of the tabernacle. It is an offering to the Lord, and we must remember that, that our giving to the Lord's work is giving to the Lord. He says in verse 5, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. So here we see that he says that this is an offering to the Lord. And then beyond that, it says that it was to come from a willing heart. He says there, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart. You know, as I stopped and thought about that, I was reminded of what it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Come with me if you would to 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 14. 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 14, it says this. It says, But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to sacrifice so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we have we given thee. So there we see that, that they not only offered willingly, as it says many times in, in uh, 1 Chronicles 29, it's actually interesting to, to go through that chapter and see how many times God told them that they offered willingly. But then beyond that, he says, For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. So it's a reminder that really everything that we have has come from God. God has been truly good to us. And it's only reasonable that we would offer to him willingly. Then let's just take a little bit of time to look at the content of this offering. And we won't look at it in great detail because we've seen much of this. But I do want to mention it. Gold is mentioned in verse 5. And gold is a speaks of Christ's deity. It reminds us of the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is God. Keep in mind that everything uh, in the tabernacle points us toward the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then there's silver. Silver is a type of redemption. It's a reminder to us of redemption. You see that here. We saw it in Exodus chapter 30 and verse 16. And you see it again in Exodus 38 verse 27. 
And as we look at 1 Peter 1.18, it reminds us that we are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Then beyond that, we see here brass is mentioned in verse 5, and brass is a type of judgment. Um, I'll just give you one example of this, but remember um, in Numbers chapter 21, when the children of Israel murmur and God sends the serpents among them and they're being bitten and they're dying and they come to Moses and they say, Moses, we've sinned against God. We've sinned in what we have done. And, and God tells Moses, Moses, make a serpent of brass and put it on a pole and whoever looks at that serpent of brass shall live. And of course, the Bible tells us in John 3, verses 14 and 15, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should have eternal life. Friends, we see that simple truth, that brass is a type of judgment. Then in verse 6, it talks about blue. Well, blue speaks of heaven, reminds us of the, of the beauty of heaven, and we even see the beauty of the first heaven uh, in what we can see from where we're at, the skies that are around us. Then purple speaks of the royalty and the wealth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody in the Word of God in Bible times uh, um, that was a wealthy person or a royal person, they showed that wealth by being dressed in purple. Remember the, the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16, we saw the rich man was clothed in purple and fine raiment and he fared sumptuously every day. Scarlet, in verse 6, is a type of the sacrificial blood. Whenever we look at the color scarlet, it reminds us of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for us. Fine linen, in verse 6, speaks to us of righteousness, and in particular, the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our righteousness. There is no righteousness in us. All the righteousness that we have is in him. At the end of the Word of God, in Revelation chapter 19, and in verse 8, we see this verse. It says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed with fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So there we see that the fine linen points forward to righteousness. Then the goat's hair speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ as our sin bearer. There's many verses that talk about that, but let me just remind you of these verses in Luke, in Leviticus rather, chapter 16 and in verse 5. Leviticus chapter 16 and in verse 5, it says this. It says, and he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Then in verse 15, then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring the blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Then verse 21, and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send them away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So the, the goat's hair speaks to us of Christ and reminds us that he is our sin bearer. And then the ram skin's dye rig speaks of the consecration of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a blessing it was when we see how he speaks and says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. The badger skins in verse um the badger skins in verse seven speak of the humiliation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see that pictured for us in Isaiah chapter fifty three when it talks about him being despised and rejected of men. The Shigam Wood speaks of his humanity. The oil and the spices point to his anointed, fragrant life, and then the onk stones and the other stones speak of the glory of Christ. So we see through this how, and this is just, I went through that quickly because we've already went through all of those things in previous chapters, but I wanted to show you once again how all of these things point toward the altogether lovely one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, the Word of God is a book about the living Word, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to know what Christ is like, you want to know what God is like, get in the Word of God, study the Word of God, and it is in the written Word that the living Word is revealed to us. He indeed is on every page of this blessed book. Study it well and consider Him in all things. Have a great day.